we will focus on the process known as bioaccumulation and look at two specific examples where mercury, a heavy metal, and DDT, a pesticide, can enter food chains and can be toxic and cause reduced fertility and even death to the organisms at the top of the food chain. Let's take an industrial accident where mercury enters the coastal waters and begins to pollute the area. Let's use some simplified numbers and say that the mercury levels in each individual phytoplankton which have absorbed the mercury and are at the bottom of this food chain is currently at around 0.1 parts per million. This may not seem like much, but the US Food and Drug Administration recommend avoid eating fish that contain mercury levels above 0.46 parts per million. Shrimp then consume the phytoplankton. And as one shrimp will consume many phytoplankton, those shrimps will accumulate or build up more mercury in their tissues. So, one shrimp now contains mercury levels of 0.3 parts per million. Mackerel then eat the shrimp. And again, mackerel rely on eating many shrimps to survive, and the mercury continues to accumulate. Now an individual mackerel contains mercury levels of 0.6 parts per million. Next, the tuna feed on the mackerel, and again, they eat many mackerel to survive. And we see mercury levels reach one part per million in an individual tuna fish. A great white shark then eats many tuna fish, and the mercury levels in the shark reach two parts per million. If people eat too many fish that contain high levels of mercury, they can suffer from mercury poisoning, which can affect the person's nervous system and damage their organs. In fact, some people eat shark fins, for example, and unknowingly could be consuming far too much mercury. DDT was a pesticide used to kill mosquitoes to reduce the spread of malaria and insects that fed on agricultural crops. It was very effective at killing pests, but there was evidence that it was killing untargeted insects that may be useful pollinators and the effects of DDT were seen to be affecting animals higher up the food chain. Once DDT entered waterways and the food chains, it's bioaccumulated just in the same way as mercury did. Birds of prey, specifically those that fed on fish, had trouble absorbing calcium if they consumed high levels of DDT. This meant they had fertility issues, specifically the eggs they produced had thinner shells and broke before the chicks developed properly for hatching. This caused population crashes in the birds of prey. Indicator species questions in an exam are very much data interpretation questions. Effectively, biologists have gathered data on some species that thrive in certain pH or oxygen levels. We've previously mentioned how untreated sewage and fertilizer runoff can lower oxygen levels. So you might need to link why we see a high number of bloodworms, which thrive in low oxygen conditions, being found near the overflow sewage pipe. You will always be provided with information about what species does well in what conditions in the question. Another example of an indicator species that can be used to determine air quality is lichen. Lichen grows on bark, but is very, very sensitive to sulfur dioxide and will not thrive if there are high levels of sulfur dioxide presence in the atmosphere. In this example, we can use the data and our knowledge and show that as we move further from the coal station, we can see more lichen growing on tree bark. Lichen is less abundant near the coal station because the sulfur dioxide levels are higher near the coal station. So, for double award, we have covered everything in your B1 biology exam. For triple award, we need to cover a little bit more and we're going to move on to the carbon cycle.